to Season 2, Episode 25 of One Man's Opinion. Today I am reviewing the apparently controversial revival of 1776, currently playing at Roundabout Theatre Company's American Airlines Theatre, and directed by Jeffrey L. Page and Diane Paulus. Why so controversial, you might ask? Well, according to those who apparently have say, namely old white people, mostly men who review theater, there is no functional reason to have a production of 1776 where none of the performers are cis men. I humbly disagree. And that is me being a straight, white, Anglo male Protestant. I am a cis male. I believe that there are three major camps of people who will see 1776 and come to their separate conclusions. Those who see it and conceptually think it doesn't work because the roles are all white men of the 18th century, many of them slave owners. Considering that many of the cast are people of color, it doesn't reconcile. Then there are those who view the show as an overreach, a sort of what good does this do for women, women of color, and non-binary rights by having them embody these men who never treated them as equal in the first place. Then there is the camp that I sit in. I first saw this production in Boston at American Repertory Theater, and I really enjoyed it. It was late in the run, so I didn't do a proper review, but upon revisiting the show and hearing the chatter throughout the theater community about why people aren't liking it, I began to question two things. One, why did I like it the first time, and why is this version of the show necessary? The two questions were answered in the first several minutes of the show, and it's something that if you don't stop to ask why what is happening in those first two moments, then yeah, it is possible to look at the rest of the show with an unanswered query. The musical opens with Crystal Lucas Perry coming on stage. At this moment, she is still Crystal Lucas Perry. She says John Adams' opening lines of you know, one useless man being a shame, two being a law firm, and three or more being a Congress. Uh, I'm paraphrasing the line, but you get it. She opens the curtains, and the rest of the cast presents itself. They are more or less dressed in modern garb. They take on their jackets, then start their transformation into the rolls. They slip out of their sneakers, boots, and other footwear, and slip into their 18th century colonial buckle shoes, rolling up their pants and their stockings. These little costume actions are all the definition this production needs to explain itself and why it exists. These are all people who had no say in the foundation of the United States of America. They had no voice and had no rights. Now, this collection of people, who do now mostly have equal rights, or at least have a right to have a seat at the table to fight for them, there's still work to be done on some of these issues, they look back and literally step into the shoes of those who came before them. Those who either took the first steps in 1776 for what may one day be a truth that all men, read people, are created equal, and those who battled against it in the political forum that was the Second Continental Congress. It's a firm reminder that though we have advanced as much as we have, we mustn't forget the past, the achievements and the compromises, the glories and the failures, warts and all. That one minute within a nearly three-hour musical bridges the gap between then and now, and that one minute is why this production of 1776 works. There are a couple moments throughout the show that reinforce this, like additional dialogue from Abigail Adams, played by Alison K. Daniel, 
that it wasn't in the original script, begging her husband John to not forget women while fighting for independence. And a visual montage happens during the second act song, The Egg, where Thomas Jefferson, played by Elizabeth A. Davis, John Adams, and Benjamin Franklin, played by Petrina Murray, sing of giving birth to a new nation with the metaphor of a bird hatching. The montage depicts the advances of rights and freedoms people have fought for over the past nearly 250 years. This is that bird growing, becoming healthier and stronger. Admittedly, I do feel this bit is a little heavy handed and maybe unnecessary, but the point does reinforce the motif established at the top of the show. Frankly, I'm disappointed that I have to spend the bulk of my review defending this production because it shouldn't need it. It holds up on its own if people can accept its concept. The cast is overall great. I love Lucas Perry's enthusiasm and zealousness as Adams. I love Murray's wizened snark as Franklin. Davis holds Jefferson with charming Virginia propriety, plus she actually does play the violin, come Aaron LaCroix's resplendent performance of He Plays the Violin as Martha Jefferson. The addition of Carolee Carmelo as John Dickinson is welcome as she gives a deliciously pompous performance. It's a return for Carmelo, who 24 years ago played Abigail in 1776 on Broadway. And I am thrilled that Sarah Porkalob has toned back their harsh vocals in the pivotal song Molasses to Rum, making their lyrics far more discernible than what was presented when I saw it at ART. None of what I have said takes away one iota of the story that is 1776. It is still a stirring story of the complex and merciless debate that was the founding of the United States. It still presents the passions, sacrifices, and hypocrisies that came with the men who signed away their lives with not much more than hope for a better world. It just happens to have people who are now representing us here in our present time, stepping into the past so that we can look forward to the future. Not everyone will embrace this concept of 1776. Obviously, since there have been many vocal detractors, but I hope that with this review, that there will be some who are willing to give it a chance. But I am only one man's opinion, so feel free to leave yours in the comments. If you want to see 1776, I'll leave a link in the description. You can support my channel by subscribing and click the notification bell for future reviews. My next review will be Yale Repertory Theater's production of Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf. Thank you for watching, and I will see you at the theater.